Where's everyone tuning in from today? Afternoon, Mix Warp, S6 Production. I put my French flair on that. Uh, hello, Aditya Music Productions, Austin, Samuel Massar. Hello to everyone over on Twitch and Facebook. Uh, um, and yeah, thanks for joining. Nice to be back. Last Monday, uh, I wasn't here. I was away on a little break. Uh, so we did one the day before, so it's nice to be back. Hope everyone is uh, having a nice time. Let us know where you are tuning in from. And today's going to be a fun one. I'm aware it's a bold statement that I've chosen for today's title. You know, three bass, the only three bass sounds you'll need. Um, but I'm going to uh, hopefully demonstrate how these are the only three bass sounds you'll need. Hello, Alejandro and Austin, yeah, Austin, some cool stuff you're talking about there, about manipulating live basses. Guitar rig's a great tool, so hopefully I can help people learn a bit more. Hello, Sophie Lecker from Barcelona. That's awesome. Um, for anyone new who's tuning in, these are uh, a weekly Monday sound design session with myself, Brent March. You can find me on Instagram and other things under Brent March or Sound and Vision. And yeah, awesome to be back for... I was about to say another in a new month, but it's actually still May 31st, isn't it? Um, yes, yeah, great to be back. Last time we did kicks in depth, so I thought why not continue with the theme and look at sort of different areas. I know some people had been saying snares and some people have been talking about leads. In fact, what we're looking at today is sort of can apply to a lead, but today is all about bass and we haven't done one on that today, so... I'll just wait two more minutes for people to tune in and then we're going to look at how we're going to create these from the ground up. We're going to use, as you can see on the scene, as you can see on the screen, we're going to be using serum and pigments. Um, so if you are familiar with pigments, great. If you're familiar with serum, great, or even both, but both can be done in either. In actual fact, pigments in its latest update probably makes it more sophisticated than serum, but serum still has, you know, that fantastic workflow and familiarity that most people know. Um, but yeah, the only three bass sounds you'll ever need today. It was cool to see uh, some new streams last week. The Sean Divine mastering one was great. So if anyone's you know, we've got a theme of different topics across different days here with some brilliant presenters. And we have a new one as well, a new mix one. So um, if you're interested in mastering, the one with Sean Devine was fantastic. And, and we obviously still have the ones with uh, Tetro and Stranger and myself and some new hosts as well. So it's awesome to see the community growing and people loving these live streams. So if you're into these guys, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified and you can notify yourself before these streams go live and give it a thumbs up if you get something from these streams. Um, feel free to drop things in the comments um, and, you know, join the Discord if you have anything that you'd like to look in depth for maybe future episodes because we're always interested to see what you guys uh, actually want us to look at. So the theme for today is three bass sounds, all you'll need. Um, like I said at the very start, it's a bold statement, but hopefully I can back it up. Um, and essentially, um, I'm going to show you um, a couple of different layers. We're going to be looking at how we can create our our main bass sound, a pluck sound, and a stereo bass sound. There's also a fourth one in there, but I wouldn't categorize it as another sound. Although, although a sub, so I'm talking about a sub bass, is very important, um, you know, I don't feel that it's, um, we're basically just going to be taking the main sound for that and filtering it. So we're going to be looking at three sounds today. And um, yeah, I'll come back to the comments for the last uh, 10, 15. Anyone has any comments throughout, please just drop them. Let us know. We do have um, uh, the ADSR monitor to answer your questions the best they can. And I will be back at the end. So that's a nice little introduction. Looks like we've got a good uh, number of people who've turned up now. And yes, Liverpool, that's cool. Good to see South Dakota, that's awesome. Yeah, Liverpool, not too far from me. I am toning down the uh, the Geordie accent as much as possible. So, okay. So, like I said at the start, we're going to use serum and we're going to use pigments. And I've just got this really basic beat here, by the way. And the purpose for this is purely just so I can basically create a baseline around this and then I can show you the shaping process. And yeah, we're going to be using serum 
and we are also going to be using pigments and this is pigments version 3 which has the new harmonic engine um, so let's have a look at what we can do if anyone's not completely familiar with any of these wavetable synths you know there's tons and tons of videos all over uh, our channel where you can go and find you know basics and we've done basic stuff we've done very advanced stuff and today is sort of a middle of the road one it's not super complex but learning how to layer can be something that you know can be lost along the on the, along the way so what we'll do is we'll do first 20 minutes in serum and then 20 minutes after in pigments and then last 10 sort of five ten minutes i'll look at questions so here we go um, it's worth noting that I'm doing probably going to do this just around some, something EDM, something electronic dance music-ish, but this could apply to a lot of different genres. So, um, you know, feel free to question me about how you can use these in different genres. Uh, so I'm going to start off here with the Serum Wavetable Synthesizer. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to go through and pick a waveform. I'm just going to turn it on so I can hear it and as standard i would usually go into the analog waveforms and go into my basic shapes but what you can also do is you can just click on the waveform and you can shape it yourself if you want so let's you just mess around with stuff like this try different ones squares triangles uh, sawtooths you name it let's try this for now Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, although it might sound terrible, is just sort of come up with a, a melodic idea, which is our bass hook, and then I'm going to basically use that across all three different layers here. So I try and make it a little bit more pleasant. So let's have a listen. Need something with a bit more notation. Let's have a think. Let me just loop that in case I need more length and that'll do. Okay, I'm just going to record this and that'll do it for the entire episode here. Uh, let's get my metronome on and off we go and record this. Yeah, that was just the four by loop that I originally had. Quantize, trim it down, and re-loop this section. There we go. Nothing, you know, it's not going to win any awards, but it'll it'll really help for demonstration purposes. Turn metronome off. <laughs> Always ruins it. Cool. So what the first thing you can think of is basically um i'm not entirely sure if people are aware of this but basses and leads are almost identical basically a lead is uh, for the most part a lead can follow a bass actually when it comes to ma the main hook in the chorus but bass is almost like a lead just pitched down two three octaves you know so uh, whatever you learn here you can apply to leads in some essence uh, what I would usually do is go into the basic shapes and what you can do is you can go through and find something that works for you. But this right here is our main base. Cool. So there's our sign for our main base. It's a little bit limp and it's not going to cut through at all. So we need something with more bite. Just get rid of this filter for now. Yeah, so I'm going to stick with this one, which is actually what I had before, which I drew. Remember, you can draw your own stuff. Cool. I'm going to add in that filter. And basically the different, the 12, 6, 18, 24, we're just getting a tighter slope here on our cutoff. I'm going to pull it right down. And I'm going to take the second envelope. First envelope is going to shape the actual bass sound. And second envelope, I'm going to drag over to the cutoff, so it'll open it. Cool. 
cool. You could also do that with an LFO if you want to have a little bit more visual control and show us how we how we can do that. So remove that modulator. Let's take this LFO and what I'll do is I will pitch it up like this and get it to slowly descend. <laughs> it's locking, which is an issue. Want it to start up here. And I'm just going to reduce the rate, get rid of any rise, boost this up to here. Okay, now I'm going to drag that on to cut off. I'm going to increase the rate. Okay, I get a little bit more control that way over the tail. Cool, and I'll just bring the cut off up. Okay, there you go. In essence, creating a base is honestly as simple as that. The way we're going to do this is structure it and reinforce it so we can make it stronger and stand out in different situations. So we're going to have a pluck, we're going to have a stereo base. So if you're listening to it in stereo environment, it has that width, but also we want to have mono compatibility. So this one here, I'm not going to do anything with voices. I'm not going to do anything with stuff like hyper or dimension to increase the stereo feel. I'm just going to keep this right down the center. And the reason for that is... A lot of people listen to music now on just mobile phones or Bluetooth speakers, which are mono. And if you have everything in stereo, number one, it's going to really add, add some phasing issues when it tries to sum it to mono. But also, it's just not going to cut through. So you want to layer your bases in a certain fashion, which is basically what we're looking at today. This is to comply with modern music production standards because of the way things are created now. Um, and listen to on different playback systems. So, pretty basic, but it'll it'll totally do for our point. And number two, let's go on to the second base here. And this is exactly the same, obviously. But what we're going to do with this one is we are going to make this our pluck. So this is going to be uh, different again, and this is going to be uh, up an octave. So let's have a listen. I'm just going to pitch it up for now. And again, what we can do is go through those wavetables. Cool. And already that's a little bit brighter than the other one, purely just by cycling through our wave tail positions. I'm going to stick with this waveform, which is similar to what we had before, but the shape of it is slightly different now in the waveform editor. Just boosting the resonance. Now let's unmute the bass that we did before, which is our main. This one I'm going to rename. This is the uh, pluck bass. And let's get rid of it. Cool. That totally works. Now what we can do is we can add more attack and sizzle to the bass by adding in the noise oscillator. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to route the noise oscillator into the filter. So that's by pressing the N here. Bring the volume up and get it to track as well. So without it, it's very, very sharp if it's not being filtered. And without the noise, you do lose that attack. And you even, you know, you notice it in context as well. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that LFO as well to ramp down the volume of the level. Cool. 
Cool, that'll do. That sounds good. That'll do for now. And what we can do later on is we're going to come back to each of these individual layers once we've got the fundamental and start changing things like our wavetables, etc. So nice and fast workflow. We're just trying to show the fundamental and then it's a pick and choose thing. That's why these are the only three bass sounds you need because we're mainly talking in terms of frequency range because the pluck occupies a totally different frequency range to the main bass and the main bass occupies a totally different frequency range to the sub bass. The one we're going to do now, the stereo bass, that occupies a different space in the stereo field. So obviously this one is going to be wider and this will be you know, beneficial on a stereo playback system. So let's have a listen to, uh, it's obviously the same material. I'm going to get rid of the noise because I don't want to have too much of that stuff going on. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to, I can just draw it again just to show you. Uh, I'm going to go back to that basic square shape. And now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to widen this up in the stereo field. Now, the way we do that is by adding more voices with unison. And we're not sacrificing any of our mono compatibility here because we have our main bass and our pluck, and then we're going to also have a mono. Cool. And if you control your detune, you can spread that even more. So, there we go. Let's have a listen in context with these. We'll all blend them later on. So, the stereo field has really opened up there. Let's hear it in context. And let's just start subtracting different things so we can hear how we've already reinforced this. So there we go, I've lost all of that stereo information. And I'm I'm sort of bopping less, you know. You've got to make sure you've got a groove. There we go. We can make that a lot wider, so don't worry. Get rid of our pluck. And we've lost a lot of the high mids. And that really just gives it that transient attack and our main bass. Now, if we get rid of our main bass, we've lost a lot of our center information. So either one of these, if we don't have to be sacrificing something. Cool. Again, it's basic. And we're going to continue to add and change, but basic stuff already. Our last one, they're the three bass sounds, but I'm just going to create a sub. And this is exactly the same, more or less, um, as our main bass. But I'm just going to basically change the filter cutoff um, so it's a lot less subby. And I'm going to do one thing, which is change to... Um, I'll show you it in the view here. I'm going to change to a... Uh, sine wave just because it's funda fundamentally works better for low end and also it interacts better with a kick on a sub level cool trying to get rid of that there we go get rid of that click a tiny bit make sure it's still in time with your main base that'll do this sub oscillator here is another way you could do this it's literally depends on how you like to work, but I like to have separate layers. Now you probably need good headphones to hear this. Really good headphones or speakers, but that is there. We don't even need the filter. And There we go. Just a little bit of shaping of the sub. Now let's have a listen to them all in context. So it's three sounds, but the sub is literally the main bass, but fill it. And let's do a game of subtraction. Okay, 
had if you're wearing good headphones i just lost everything from like 190 you know right down to 30 so it's worth having the sub get rid of the main still grooves pretty hard actually which is a good sign but we don't get the main mid coming through the bass and the plug again we're losing the transients and stereo it just becomes really boring but sometimes you need to make it boring for mono compatibility so there we go all four sounds we're going to repeat the process with pigments and obviously each individual wavetable synth offers slightly different things but for the most part that's all of our sounds now what we can do in, is we can go in and we can shape them and breathe more life and interest into them so uh, main bass number one what i would do is again i want to keep this a mono compatibility thing i'm going to add a multi-band compressor mainly to bring out the mids with and without so we can hear that and we can add an EQ and I'm going to get rid of everything from say a hundred down reason for that is we have our own sub layer don't we And just to fatten this up, some distortion. And I'm gonna put this I'm gonna put this after the compressor. And that's thickening up the sound. And if you watched last week's stream on Crest Factor, saturation is one of the best things we can do to improve our crest factor. It also works with perceived loudness and stuff like that. So it's just thickening up the audio there. I like the tape saturation the most. There we go. Bit of shaping there. Pluck bass. If we head back over to there. Same thing. Just needs a little bit of compression to bring it out. So nothing really needed on the low bands. Cool. And we can add to these bass sounds, we can start adding more spatial effects. about the whole great how can we maybe add a little bit more interest to this i'm gonna eq it just to tidy up we don't we need anything from about 150 let's say so that means that all of the layers start to basically play together better Stereo one. This one's probably where we can have the most fun. Hyper dimension. Gonna get rid of the hyper. But bring up the dimension. Chorus. And we can sync it to BPM. Which is the best way to do it in my opinion. And once again, compressor. I'm gonna put that before both of these effects. So it's similar to the pluck, but this one's all about um, bringing out the different layers and the frequency ranges. So let's have a listen now if we start to uh, group all these. Just did a quick save there. Just going to save there. Cool, and let's just go back to what we started with. So 
sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> you know, the melodic idea is probably catchy by now. You've been listening to it for 25 minutes. But if we're talking production-wise, it's lacking all of the things that we've been looking at. And it was really, really quick to uh, to create them and shape them. The sub is basically the same as the main bass. The plug brings out those harmonics and the upper frequencies, and the stereo opens up the stereo image. Let's have one more listen. Great. I'm going to bust these. And you could now one thing you can do to make all your bass groove harder with your beat is obviously to side chain it. We can do it in a number of different ways. A stock compressor, because you don't need to use anything fancy whatsoever. And side chain it to the beat. And what I like to do is bring your attack and your release down, maximum ratio. And now let's have a listen. <laughs> So they stop, they just duck a little bit at the start of each kick. And we can make that a little bit more accentuated, obviously pulling back on the threshold. And let's bring it up with some makeup game. Great. Okay, now something else you can do to go in and tidy all these things up even more is just simply adding EQ. So, sub, this also applies to pigments, um, obviously, well, anything you use, and it doesn't have to be serum or pigments whatsoever, by the way, um, anything you can use to shape your sound. But sub, you want to keep that in sort of anywhere between 30 to 80, 90, well, 20 to 30, 90, depends, because you feel the sub more than actually hearing it. Again, you will need good headphones for these. Cool. Same thing with this one. I'll have a slightly less steep curve. There's a trick that you can do with Fab Filter Pro Q3, and I like to do this when designing all my sounds. If I'm recording field recordings, or if I'm designing things with software, Make a couple of points, tighten your cue, and this is the best way to possibly learn about resonance and issues. Play it back and solo each frequency until you find something that's just resonant and nasty. Resonant there. Now, obviously, it could be the fundamental, so you've got to be careful what you cut. That's definitely the most resonant. Nothing too much up here. That's because we've already cut a lot of the high end for the plug. So what I'll do now is, rather than just getting rid of all these frequencies on this bass, which might give it character, and just completely cut them like, um, like this, what I'll do is I'll use the multiband feature so it just ducks. Let's clean that up a ton. And we'll just keep going with this. Just drag this one over. This one needs the least amount of low end. And again, let's make a different, a slightly different cut. Tighten your cue and go through. Oh. This one's got a lot more issues. Make another filter. Notch. Isolate. You can do this with other EQs as well. Oh, my goodness. And the more you add, the more compression and stuff, it'll just start bringing them out more and more and more. What I'm going to do with this one is just to actually bring out the transient small. This is a drum shaper, but it's just a transient designer. And I'm getting it to accentuate the main bah, bah, bah. soft clip is just reducing the dynamic range, just so all of them sum together in the bus don't come to like crazy, crazy value. This looks pretty good. Obviously, we could add some more compression and and effect it later. That's cool. And our last one, stereo.
Again, we can get rid of everything up to about 200. Get rid of those filters. And this is our last layer. And then I'll show you a before and after and you'll be amazed at the difference this has made in terms of the um, cleanliness. Mm, it's okay up there. That's okay as well, Jim. That's resonant. That's horrible. Cut there. I just widen the cue ever so slightly. Cool. Now let's listen to all of these and what I'll do is I will take out the EQ decisions that I've made. Again, you'll need good headphones or good studio monitors, but everything's cleaned up, got rid of any masking issues because we've got four different layers here. Three really, but one of them is just the other filtered down. Much, much cleaner, much, much cleaner. And what, by the way, one thing to note is you could use uh, something like Kickstart if you want to make all these groove. Um, if you don't want to use compressor, Kickstart's a really cool tool. Oh my god, this has got infectious. And the the, uh, the Kickstart or the compression is just allowing the, uh, the beat to come through on the fundamental where the kick is the doom. Doom. Which I'm sure a lot of you'll know. Uh, compression gives you more control, but Kickstart's got its own cool thing and it's quick. Great. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So, there we go. Pretty straightforward. We could continue to do more things in shape and uh but basically a little bit of um a little bit goes a long way is basically when you think about it this one fundamental main base and this has only been 30 minutes goes a long way in terms of um shaping all of the different layers. So, start off with our main, go through them one more time before we move on to some new stuff, but main Pluck was the main, just changed our waveform. Stereo was the pluck, but really we're just opening up the stereo field. And the sub is actually just really the main bass, but fill it down super low. Now what you could do now at this point, because these are the only three things you'll ever need, uh, basically the reason that I, I call these the only three you'll ever need is because they are the only three bass sounds you'll ever need in terms of frequency range like they're occupying. You've hit every single goalpost now in terms of your low end super tight but not muddy. You've got a really good uh, mono compatibility which you'll punch through on those Bluetooth mono compatibility things and you know Alexas and, and all those sort of things. And then I know Apple talked about they're releasing Dolby Atmos for all of Apple Music and you know it's about time. Um, Stereo is still really important, and really we should be going past stereo by now, but stereo bass, that's important for opening up, but again, if you just had a stereo bass, it's going to really just crumble on those uh, single um, single monitor setups. So what you could do now, because you've got all of those areas sorted, you could go back through and just change waveforms. That's why it's the only three sounds you'll need. Everything's covered, and the rest of it is just purely taste, and it's subjective. So you could go back through... And you could say, well, I want a different sound here, or I want a different sound on there, or so on, so on. So, for example, a pluck's a good one. What you could do with your pluck is you could start looking through, and let's have a look. Digital, maybe a digital waveform. Uh, honestly, the best way to do it is just go through, have a look. So, let's have a listen. Already got more harmonic interest than the waveform I had before. Much, much more. In fact, that sounds great. Same thing for your stereo. Digital. 
That's cool. So just mess around with these things. Now what I could do is I could scan the waveform with a separate LFO if I need to. Just start adding. Bit Daft Punk now, isn't it? And now let's have a listen. We've just changed two things that are creative and subjective and let's have a look at what we got. Yes. Sorry if you're going to go, you know, throughout your day with that constantly in your head. Um, but there we go. Four bass sounds, but really it's three, and the sub is just filtering down our main um, our main layer. So, awesome. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and really, I was doing it in a pretty slow way, so you can see how you can quickly create your own bass sounds. and uh, Or you could do this with a preset. Maybe you got, like, I think we were talking last week about you've got a kick drum that you might love, but it's just not quite right. So um, what you can do is just go in and tweak and uh, maybe think about which, you know, what's occupying what in terms of frequency range. But yeah, sounds good. A lot of bounce, a lot of movement, a lot of width, a lot of uh, center information. Really, really good. Um, before I go on and recreate this in pigments, and obviously pigments has slightly different things to what you get with serum and vice versa. I'll just have a look in the comments um, in case there's any outstanding questions because I'm aware there's a lot coming through here. Um, great to see. This is great stream for me right now, getting into pigments. Yeah, just play around with it and have some fun. Ah, yes, I thought I'd seen that come through. Someone asking what is crest, or someone said crust factor. That sounds like something to do with toast, to be honest. Um, it's a bit like a couple of weeks ago, I called something a bosselator instead of oscillator, but I still think a company should create something with that now. Uh, the crest factor was something I talked about in a previous stream and basically what it does is you are looking at the basically the, in, the frequency range of the entire piece of music and to improve your crest factor which means compliance across different systems and it's sort of genre specific but to improve your crest factor means just add more um, saturation things that thicken up the audio signal reduce the dynamic range and give you more headroom um, it's very important on, uh, actually it is very important on bass sounds and things that are very transient heavy, so stuff like kicks. Uh, so go back and watch that previous stream, Kicks in Depth, if you are interested in learning about that, because I think I did about 10 minutes on it um, for shaping your own kicks. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, TDR Nova, that's a great one. I think that people asking about the EQing I was doing with the basses, uh, I'm not experienced with it, but I'm pretty sure a lot of other things can do this. Waves F6, um, I think the fruity, the fruity one for FL Studio does it as well. Um, so, yes, um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> the boss later. <laughs> it's good to see people. So there, yeah, cool. Um, there we go, guys. And let's move on to pigments. So for anyone who was just coming on while I was waffling there and answering a couple of questions, this is what we got. And we're just going to sort of recreate it in pigments now because obviously everyone uses different stuff. Uh, the good thing is we've got our MIDI information already. So um, let's get rid of all these as much as it's going to kill me. And pigments... Sadly, that's not a bass sound. <laughs> okay, um, pigments, let's dive into, uh, it's called default. And there's our basic patch, which is a cool sound on its own. It's almost the sub layer. Let's start off basic. And if everything we learned in Serum applies to pigments, but with a slightly different workflow. And basically what I'm gonna show you is how you can um, use pigments in a slightly different way to get slightly different sounds. Um, there's the waveform we used before. So this is our waveform section. I'm going to turn off that little light bulb because it annoys me. And multi-mode filter. 
and for opening up the filter in pigments you have a little bit more optionality you could use an envelope you could use an lfo or a function i actually find that the function seems to be one of the better ones if i'm honest super easy to control modulation points here i just click on function one which is what i'm currently in function one and this function two and function three on the side here which comply with these and that's it i can just go like this i've just dragged it there to the desired amount again it's just do it with your ears see what sounds good great again this one's our mono mono compatibility one sounds pretty good actually in terms of the shape i'm not doing a great deal with the adsr because i want it to kick in pretty much straight away maybe a slightly less steep filter awesome so you guys should know what's next once we've got our main just leave this one because it's literally doubling up the audio signal so with this one what we're going to do pluck layer and then we're going to do stereo layer let's have a look i'm just going to pick a slightly different waveform for now and again later on go back through and change all these things and taste and, and see what you like slightly steeper filter function i'm going to get that to open up more cool and what we can do is go into the sample and add a sample to thicken up that um transient or we could go into our utility engine which was new with pigments version 3 and add the noise here probably better to do it like that and again make sure that we send this to our filter just shaping it it's tracking already which is good this will follow the key now if i press this i could have a separate filter for it which is nice great you could have a lot of fun actually with the sample section here and i'll send it second filter pitch this up piano but you can see how you could basically go through these fully impacts you could use all sorts of stuff this one's tuned incredible wow <laughs> position of all the so if you're going to do that you need more time <laughs> let's stick with our white noise that'll do for this one let's hear them together they too much of the white noise actually that's ah, because i changed the filter and let's get rid of this layer there we go. A bit like before, we've lost a lot of this stuff that was making it energetic. Let's continue. And what we're going to do is we're going to create this. This is our stereo layer. I uh, can get rid of that, to be honest. And let's go and have a look through Pigments 3 waveforms, new stuff that we got. Just going to cycle through here. I think what could be oh that's nice natural what could be cool is yeah a natural bass that, I thought that'd be really cool so what I can see here is wavetable was stuck in one position so what we can do is we can use a function I'll use another function to scan through it and it's a simple process of literally just I can do it in a number of ways. I, I can do it like this. I 
and we can change the rate. Make it faster. That's cool, I like that a lot. Slightly less steeper filter. Okay, and because we did it before, I'm just going to start doing that stuff now. So I'm just going to start adding to this in terms of, uh, we could try a bit of, bit of reverb. Really need to dampen that. Bring the decay down. Smaller size. And what I love now about this new pigment is OTT basically, but with a little bit more interest. So we don't need this frequency region. This one, important. Great. There's also one here, there's a chorus. Cool. Actually, there's a chorus from Juno, which will probably be even cooler to use. Let's use that. Awesome. And we could even do a um, stereo pan, which will move it left and right. There's loads of fun stuff here. A little bit more optionality and some really lovely waveforms. And what we can do is we can maybe add some voices. There's our detune. That section there is very like Serum, you know. Cool. Let's have a listen now. We haven't got our bus set up with the uh, compression. We'll get that in a second. Now let's do this one and filter. And let's bring it down. And take a really steep filter. Get rid of that. Um, we don't need it to open up the filter. Back the sine wave. And we could add some uh, multiband compression. By the way, if you can't hear this, again, those good headphones or, or some good monitors are uh, fundamental. You'll have heard that. <laughs> Great. Okay, we got all our layers. And now it's a taste thing. Go through waveforms. Could even add a sample in if you want. For this one. guitar and bass. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm on the wrong layer there. Stereo bass layer. I'm going to try and find a bass guitar. Uh, guitar and bass. What you could do here, by the way. Oh, there we go. You see, you could import one. Change the start time here. Uh, that is low. There we go. Oh, that's going to sound so good. Don't forget how powerful pigments is. Again, the slap. That sounds awesome. What we can do is maybe open the filter a little bit more. Okay. Send it to filter one. And a function. That's mega cool. Love that. Maybe blend a waveform in with it. Something with a bit grit. These are actually field recordings. 
ring mod. That's cool. I'll just leave it at that for now. And open up the voices once more because this is our stereo layer. And one thing you could do here is add compressor. Pull back your threshold. Mm. You can get an automatic makeup game there, which is cool. I'm going to get rid of, just to make this really tight. And I might even pitch it up again. No, prefer 24. <laughs> Gonna go with the envelope. Okay, let's hear them in context. That's our sub. Add some bus compression. And let's take the compressor from before. Again, you could use kickstart, whatever you fancy. You could get crazy with this as well in pigments. And you could use stuff like... There is a mental thing over here, the resonator. Really cool. Let's add in that harmonic engine that's new. Just make sure I'm on the right one here. So, harmonic engine, this is additive synthesis. Send it to the second filter. Let's try a formant. Just trying to make this stereo bass the most sort of unique. bring this up. Shepherds the shepherd tones. Slightly different. We can increase our partials, which is the number of basically harmonic uh, harmonic engine additive synthesis is sine waves. That's what's being generated there. It's the opposite to subtractive synthesis. Go through a couple of these filters. We did get a new Jupiter 8 filler, by the way. We'll just use that for the sake of it being new, because it sounds cool. And this is what we have. You could add some perks to that. And you've got an instant chorus bass line, a lead line at the start. I was talking about how you can use a bass sound as a ring, as not a ring sound, as a lead sound, because they are fundamentally the same thing, just different in register. So you could totally take one of these and pitch it up, you know? So there are your fundamental bass sounds. Um, Again, we've just replicated, if anyone's late, I've just replicated exactly what I did in Serum, which is create uh, three different bases. Um, maybe I should have called it four bases you'll need, but the reason I went for three is because the fourth one is just a sub layer, which is an exact duplicate of the main base layer. And I've just, I just go with a, a filter and just basically occupy anywhere from, say, 20 up to about 90, 100, a bit less. Um... And so, yeah, the three bass sounds you'll only need. We've done them with serum. We've done them with pigments. It was quite quick. You know, start out, find your waveform, create your main layer, monocompatibility. Second layer is your pluck with some grit, and that'll give you your transients, and it'll add the energy. Third layer is your stereo to open up your stereo field, and then your sub is just filtering down your main bass. 
and then all I did was just add some compression and that was basically just to um, make a groove um but really really simple in essence and then you go through and you do all the things that are personal subjective and that maybe you might like oh i didn't like what you did with that waveform or whatever you know it's completely subjective you go back and you change those things but you really do have especially for electronic music the three bass sounds you'll ever need here maybe it's too much you might not even need this much if you're creating say lo-fi music then you know you've already got too much stuff but if you're creating music and you want to make people dance and move then these are the only three bass sounds you'll ever need bold statement but i feel like i backed it up um so anyone who missed it guys uh basically we created them in serum and then we've just created them in pigments there and uh yeah that was a ton of fun um we could we could go so much more in depth all these things and pigments um i always forget pigments is really really powerful um i love how good it is for certain recreations of certain artists um i was using it a lot for like some flume stuff because the way it scans through um wavetables is cool but yeah loads of fun there um i'm just going to take i was conscious of the time but yeah again it ran away i'm just going to take a look through the comments because i haven't looked for them for 20 minutes um again if you missed this you can watch it back uh start the stream over i'll watch it back and yeah just to note there we got monday tuesday thursday friday and wednesday the production challenge so there is a ton of these things going on at the minute There's, you know if you feel like your sound design's n n lacking come here on a monday if you feel like you want to get better at mastering there's something for that now if you want to learn about new stuff there's something for that if you want to learn about i watched some of the stranger one recently where he was looking at um a theory side of building uh, chords and stuff so it's so cool that um it's like going to university honestly it's like it's amazing really I, i've really um quite proud to be part of all this stuff it's really cool um so let me just take a couple of seconds um let me have a look uh thank you the counselor first one we're great brand march thank you very much um the let's have a look Oh, okay, yeah, saving them to um, sound design playlist on Discord. That's cool, yeah, that's really good. Uh, pigment spit, obviously we've just done that. Um, let's have a look. Thank you for this. Meanwhile, in dubstep projects, 50 different bass deals. Um, yeah, the Juno filter is really cool. Awesome addition there. Um, yeah, the Jupiter filter is really, really cool. Uh, you duplicated the main base and filter EQ just a subject. Yes, exactly right, Drunk Bishop. We basically um, just took our main base, which is the first thing we created in Pigments, and the first thing we created in Serum, and just basically more or less filter it. But also, it's worth mentioning that for your sub, you're going to want to use a sine wave um, for the majority of the time. You can use Sawtooth and stuff. It depends on the style of the track, but I just find that I use a sub more than anything else um and thank you jacob claire enjoy listening thank you nice way to wrap it up so guys uh, as always that was loads of fun if you have any more questions feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join the discord server and you can post stuff there we're always taking consideration for new ideas there's new stuff every week um and Again, don't forget to hit that bell icon and give this a thumbs up. And you can be reminded before these go live by basically setting a filter on. I think it's on the bell icon to remind when a certain time goes live each week. So I shall see you back here next Monday, guys, for another one of these sound design sessions. So go away and, you know, the best thing you can do is practice what you've learned um, and just have a uh, have a go at creating this stuff yourself. And again, you know, as, as long as you get those fundamental EQ regions, the sub, your mid, your pluck occupies more of your high mids, and then your stereo opens up your stereo. Um, you just need to basically uh, do this stuff, and then it's just creative taste stuff. Like, I'll change this oscillator, I'll change this wavetable, I'll, I'll like this filter, I'll like this effect, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, someone's saying, do you have a channel I can follow? This is something I've always thought I should have done, so maybe I should do something because i see how it's cool for people like tatro and that i've got tons of i've probably got way too many videos floating around the <laughs> the internet for different companies and stuff but uh i'm having tons of fun doing this stuff for adsr but yeah i'll consider it um in the future drunk bishop thank you for asking um thank you everyone and i hope you found this fun useful got something from it learned something and i'll see you 
uh, next Monday. Don't forget, streams all week. Come to the ADSR Music University. Okay, I'll see you later, guys. Have a great evening, afternoon, or morning. Catch you next week. Thank you.